I've got nothing to say. <laughs> I'm not going to speak until the <laughs> private feed. <laughs> why, Happy to smile. Why is it? Yeah. Um, You've got a different smile, Drew. Shut up. Hey? <laughs> you have to watch you the private watch feed. you got to watch private feed. <laughs> it's the first time the there's something joke. visual yeah. to really play on the in-joke that's going to well, be revealed during the fact, private yeah, feed. In fact, yeah, watch the private feed this week because we're going to show you something. We're going to... Reveal something. Mm. Is that right? What a teaser. Isn't that a good teaser? That's oh, a great teaser. <laughs> Boom. Um, great teaser. So how's your week, mate? You been okay? Yeah, it's been fine. Yeah, busy. Yeah. Into it. All good. Yeah, happy days. Our, our footy teams aren't doing too good. We'll talk about no. more about that in the mate, private feed. Mine's at the top of the show. Oh, top of the ladder. Oh, you changed to the Dolphins. I, <laughs> I forgot. changed to the Dolphins. She ch- he changed to the Dolphins. Openly. Yeah, last Honestly. year. Last year he did it. Because Trevor claims to be a Queenslander. I was how, how, long, how long did you live in Queensland for? From 30 the, minutes? From, I, I started school and went all the way to year five. <laughs> so My formative five years, years. Five years in Queensland. Formative. Formative years. So you call yourself a Queenslander? 100%. Wow. And I lived in Redcliffe on the Redcliffe okay. Peninsula okay, at so that's Woody why Point and went to Humpy Bong State School. Humpy Bong. And, you know, I know what Kippering Shopping Centre is. Trust me, I'm a dolphin. Okay. Well, that, that's that's fine. Okay. That's I fine. used to live next door to the pigeon lady. Okay. <laughs> a current affair used to do stories on this wild, lady. old, really? drab, like looked homeless, but lived in a house that looked like it had never been yeah. painted or looked after and was thousands of pigeons. Yeah. Literally was on TV. Can news. I ask, right? You know, you're on TV regularly now. Mm. When you were a kid, yep. did you, were you ever on TV when you were a kid? Were you no. like in the background or something? No. or? No. Like I, I snuck on TV when um, snuck on TV. Oh, yeah, like at the footy, you know, you'd say, "Oh, there's me," you know, you you see the cameras, yeah, you yeah. wave around like an idiot, right? Mm. And I remember one year, uh, it was 1986, and I South, I was at Redfern Oval watching uh, South play. My brother was the first grade captain, and they beat Manly, and it was a big deal. They made the semi finals. It, it was a big game. And I, I, because because they, um, you know, Mario's brother, and I was in there, and I was sort of just on the inside of the ground, and um, I thought uh, George Piggins was just sitting there, and at full time, the cameras there, and I've gone up and shaken George's George Piggins' hand right, right in front of him, <laughs> like right there, and, and you know, clapping and shaking his hand. It's just a blatant way to get on TV. Wow! And mate, I'll show you that clip. I'll show it to you. And there's, there's me. Have you still got it? Yeah, Send it's, it it's on me. YouTube. You can see it. Like it's, this was a big game that yeah, Souths yeah. won, and the 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 footage on me on the sideline. I'm going to say yeah. this is going to sound ridiculous, right? Yeah. But I essentially <laughs> foreshadowed YouTube. What? I knew. I saw it coming, and okay. didn't take advantage of it. Obviously, <laughs> um, I used to, and I'm talking. This would be year <sighs> Griffith, so eight and nine, maybe, maybe yep. seven and eight. Yeah, I used to. Trevor was a big nerd, by the way. Yep, I used to computer imagine nerd. in my mind, and I think I used to draw and sketch Trev TV. Trev TV. And I would. This is wild. I would review products. What? I'm actually only just remembering. Hey, you but, were the but mate. You I could have been gadgets. MKBHD. I'd, you be, were... <laughs> I'd be in the bathroom looking at a, a, a thing of shampoo, going, "Well, this is this has got hydrochloric <laughs> oxalate on it." You know, and like I don't know why. So I don't products, know what in tech, my head. Not no, tech, not tech. Just anything. So you want to be like a TV. Maybe talent. I was watching too much uh, TVSN. Price or, is right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I used to love the Price is right. Price is right was great. Great show. Yeah. I used to enjoy the Trev the, TV. The mate. models were great on the Price is yeah. right. Were they? Beautiful? I didn't notice. Yeah. Didn't care. Yeah, I was at that Trev age. Trev TV, yeah. and then I age? and then I <laughs> sold that business and went to Trev's <laughs> tours. And I used to what? draw. I used to draw buses. Really? I used to draw buses. Like so coaches you're sort of trying to visualize really cool coaches. And, really? You know, so hang on. So when did the tech come into this? Like, weren't you? I was, were you I was coding then, by I, then? Were yeah, you I was writing basic and stuff. Sixty four and right. stuff. Yeah, for sure. So when your mates are out getting on the getting on the drink and chasing girls, you were in there doing your basic programming. Where? <laughs> yep. We go to a big party and they're all getting on it. And I'm like, I've got a new mixtape with with with, a rocket, go with my... a rocket ship sound effect at the end. <laughs> I'm going to go play on my Commodore 64. Record all the songs off the radio, and then at the end, record on the Commodore 64 a rocket Mate, taping. I off. remember. I look. I got to say, wow. I was as big a nerd as you were in high school. I, I used to book the. Um, we had a couple of Commodore pets in the school library. Remember those? No. They had the sort of the remember, white I'm much screen, younger than you. White screen with a keyboard. It was like an all-in-one computer, hmm. and had a tape tape loader. Yep. So it was all in one. It was a, so the predecessor to the Commodore. The Commodore sixty four was more the consumer version yes. without the monitor. Right, and um, I used to book it for lunchtime. So we'd go in there, press. Uh, there'd be a little poker. You play poker. Yeah, and you'd you'd, you'd be 
take 15 minutes for this thing to load. Yeah. And then all, all lunchtime, you'd, you'd be in there playing the game. Yeah, and you, that was my entire lunchtime. You'd have your mates around on the weekend and you'd load yeah. up Arnie's armchair cricket which would take an hour and a half to load. So you'd have to go and play a game of cricket in the backyard yeah. and then come in and it got to, you know, on you, you remember what how long on to the go counter. on the loading because yeah. of the counter? I'd write it down. And so you'd know it's got to get to 6.23 before it's going to load Arnie's armchair cricket. And so you come back in, it's still at 400, we'll have another yeah. game. I used know? to do that with uh, Helicopter Rescue. There was a game on the Commodore 64 and it would dead set take half an hour and yeah. you'd be out the back kick of the footy and think, oh, hang on, let's go check it and then it'd be yeah. ready to go. And you play, like you'd yeah. play Arnie's armchair cricket and America's Cup was another one, really long, like really long load times, over and out. And you'd play for 20 minutes ago, that's enough. Yeah, <laughs> so your play time was longer than the, shorter than the load time. Exactly. Yeah. Crazy. What enough, am I doing here? Yeah. All right, it's wow. time to do this. Welcome to Two Blokes Talking Tech. Not a bad price. With Trevor Long from EFTM.com. Really handy device. And Stephen Fennec from techguide.com.au. Have you not watched you the show back? Yeah, that's the credits are rolling. Yeah. Right <laughs> I'm pointing You're at Trevor and pointing at myself. But, uh, yeah, the credits are rolling. Works in the EV show, but not yeah, here. I noticed that our images, our videos are reversed. Did you know that? You want The videos are reversed. What are you talking I'm wearing about? a shirt and my video, it's, it's back to front. You made me looking, looking the other way. You didn't notice that? Every week? Yeah. It's the, That's how the video was made. What are you talking about? You know, so the video, when you see me, I'm wearing a Oh, South in the shirt. intro? Yeah. Oh, f- yeah, I yeah. thought you meant the whole no, show. No, no, the intro. Oh, I didn't make the intro. intro. I just, you know, <laughs> yeah. Someone else did that. That's that's what it is, mate. It's back to front. Because I'm looking this way and I've got my, my logos on here, my South shirt on. Okay, yeah. mate. Can I tell you how many people care about that? Uh, one. Yep. You. Yeah, just me. Episode 628 of Two Blokes Talking yep. Tech. Uh, thanks to the great people at Netgear and Arlo for your home networking needs. Netgear's got you covered. And for home security, nothing better than Arlo in the market. Uh, Stephen, it, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about LG launching their 2024 yep. TV range. And TV season continues with Does it ever. Samsung knocking it out of the park and yep. Hisense following quickly with their pricing. So I just want to talk quickly about how Samsung did this because yeah. i got to say the best thing I've seen in Australia in tech was the way they presented this. Yeah. Don't you think it was impressive? So that at the machine hall in the Forget city. where it was. Yeah, they yeah. made it look like CES. They did a bit, eh? Yeah, yeah. It was... It mate, was that, a, well, they've done that before. No, but, yeah. no, but not on this scale. Not to this extent, this was yeah. This was better... Yeah. In terms of looking at their broad product range, yeah. this was better than going to their standard CES. Well, the standard CES doesn't have TVs, remember? No. So they have, or they remember they have oh, the pre-show. The yeah, the pre-show, mm. and uh, they have the something at Caesars. Remember, With that, that's the. That's I'm the, talking about their standard CES. Yeah, this yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah. This is such a with good all thing. the different scenarios that we talked about. Yeah. Like if you didn't go sport, to CES, yeah. yeah. This was a perfect introduction yeah. to it. Okay. So they did a great job. I think they spent a lot of money because it was really yeah, well pulled well off. Put but together, yeah. separating their TV launch into, you know, sport and movies and sound yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But also, I think they did a very good job of, and LG did too, but theirs was just TVs in a room. And yeah. No disrespect to that. Well, they, they chose an amazing venue. Their TVs were on Stadium. Allianz Stadium, yeah, yeah. But this was, this no, was, was real You know what, they education. told a story. Mm. The, the, the the story they told was they've got a TV for every lifestyle, every taste that you have, whether you're mm. a sport fan, movie fan, gamer. Yeah. And uh, they said, and, you know, they also were told a story about how the TVs can fit anywhere in your house. Yeah. So I think, you know, tick, tick, tick for all of those because one of those is going to interest someone. Yeah. Their lifestyle, their interest, where they're going to have the TV. So... Even before you've even talked about the features, they've already hooked you in with this whole enticing range. And you've spoken to Jeremy Senior on the Tech yeah, Guide podcast. Yeah, so that'll Will be, that be tech, next week. That's next Monday. Yeah, my my Tech Guide podcast. So Jeremy Senior is the the vice president in charge of um, consumer their their t- TV consumer electronics, TVs and appliances. And uh, yeah, so he has. We have a chat about the the range and sort of the market as well. More about the market mm, as well. Mm. And and we talk about some features. We sort of dive deep into some features. I, I was, yeah. I'm pretty honest with these people. I'm, I don't beat around the bush much. Yes. And I, I was like, okay, you're going to talk about AI till the cows come home here. And I get yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to make the point to Jeremy and others that I, I think we've got to be careful about using the term AI today mm. because of the way AI has grown and been learned by the average general public. You yeah. know, it's now a, a different thing to what it was five years ago. And so AI in a TV isn't really what you think it's going to be. It's not, you know, TV's going to 
pick a show for you yeah, or yeah. help you. It's it's more about what the TV's capabilities are powered yeah. by Improving, AI. Improving, yeah, in like reacting to your environment, but also upscaling. upscaling. Yeah, well, I was going to say, yeah. the best example of that is upscaling. Yeah. But let's be real. We've been talking about AI upscaling for yeah. years. We, when we were at, machine learning at headquarters Korea, yeah, of, yeah. of Samsung, we talked about machine learning and how AI was being used yep. to create a model that allowed them to upscale. The thing... The great point one of them made to me at Samsung was if you take a, a picture and then put it on a bigger TV, normally it's stretched. Yeah. But what they do is they expand the pixels and fill the gap between yeah. the pixels fill, with something stretch. else. Yeah. And that that's a different way yeah. of explaining how they make an 8K picture, let alone a really big 4K yeah. picture, look good. And that that's well, the AI processor too has a lot to do with it. So mm. that, that does all the heavy lifting. So it, it's interesting even with if Samsung, we're going to talk about Hisense later, but at the heart of their TVs is a processor. It's become like the computer, how we talk about computers, yeah. powered by mm. this processor because it's got to do so much processing. But uh, on the AI, AI side, I think that, yeah, there's a, a lot of improvements because the, the goal of a TV company is to improve picture, improve sound quality, improve the experience. Yeah. And if AI can do that, I think Samsung's got a real, they're telling a great story here with the processor, the features that can enhance the the video and the audio quality. I don't think we give enough credit to the ability of a TV. Because I was thinking about this stand there. Yep. I might have tuned out a little bit when they were talking <laughs> because I'm thinking, okay, so I'm watching any – I choose the content I'm going to watch. The TV has no idea. I could yep. plug a USB stick in. I could bring yep. in a drive, whatever. And frame by frame, mm. 25, 60, whatever number of frames per second, yeah. the TV is going, oh, here's the picture. Oh, it's got to do this. And then here, that, like, it should it's look doing, like this. It's yeah, doing yeah. all of that. Yeah. In fractions of a second, that needs power, repeatedly yeah. Yeah. for every second of every minute yeah. of every hour of and content in, you watch, and in 8K resolution too. in real time, yeah, which is Can that we, requires like, massive power. Yeah. Digital. Remember when digital radio first came out? I was working yeah. in radio at the time, and the yeah. big blow up because you're at the footy and listen to digital radio, and it's like 10 seconds behind. Yeah. Because with digital radio, you you encode when it comes out of the commentator's mouth, it gets encoded into digital, sent out the antenna, and then in the radio, it gets received and decoded. And that takes, you know, five seconds there, five seconds yeah, there. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Whereas we're watching TV yeah. and it's going, oh, you're watching something in standard definition. Let me let me improve that for you yeah. up to 8K mm. and I'll do it frame by frame as you watch it's it. Don't you think remarkable. that's mind blowing? Absolutely <laughs> remarkable. And the good thing, so like 8K, there's not a lot of 8K content, right? Hardly yeah. any, but. What this does, it takes your content, whether you're watching free to air, YouTube, you know, Blu ray, 4K, yeah. and upscales it. So mm. you, you, and I've done, I've watched Star Wars and all that, and it does make it look, you're thinking, wow, that's detail yeah. there. And uh, the AI, the heavy lifting the AI is doing, is doing those little fill ins. So, okay, that, that's, a, that's a horse. So here's what a horse should look like, and it, does, it fills in the little gap. So, mm. And that's happening in real time. And uh, instantly, before your eyes, literally yeah. before your and eyes. Some that's of the happening. powerful moments for that are things like sport, making sure the blur of a yeah. ball flying through the air. Well, can't it detect there a ball? Can't yeah. it detect the shape and size of a ball and think, okay, he's watching sport or yeah. she's Grass watching sport? And a little round white dot. Yeah, dead giveaway. That's Definitely. sport. It's going to be sport. And so it flicks it into sport mode. Yeah. yeah. But and it also helps it all smooth all yeah. that out. So rather um, than having the juddering, I think they were talking about the ball is smooth through the whole yeah. motion. Yeah. Um, the. The one thing this is random. My almost favourite thing was the. Uh, can I just can, can I guess what you're going to say? The voice enhancer. No, no. Okay. Anti sorry. glare on the OLEDs. Okay. Like um, when you yeah. stand side onto an OLED yeah. in a bright environment, mm. like even looking at their Neo QLED here. They, they had a good example of that, didn't they? Yeah, you know, good, I yeah. can see the reflection. Look at that yeah. TV over there. You can see the reflection. You put yeah. an anti glare on that. Yeah. That reflection dulls out. It doesn't disappear. Yeah. It yep. dulls out. And mate. It was a great demo. It was a good demo of that yeah. technology because OLED in in the Samsung's mindset with OLED is that it's not as bright and it isn't as bright as the Neo QLED, right. which yeah. is the QLED is still their flagship product. Yeah. yeah, and the reason it's not needed on a QLED is because of the brightness. It's super bright anyway, so mm. reflections you're not going to see them because it's so bright. But with the OLED, they have uh, the the anti glare. On, on the OLED TVs to maintain the brightness and the color and the black levels because they're not quite as bright as 
as their hmm. as their QLED TVs. And the, the example at there where they displayed the new TVs, I think they had like a fake window just near the TVs, hmm. and there were two last year's model, this year's model. The difference was night and day. It was yeah, amazing. It was. Yeah. Now. But I want to talk about the voice enhancer. Oh, yeah, voice the voice enhancer. enhancer. Yes. So this is an, a, a thing. A thing. Haven't you heard some of your listeners and readers would say, you know what, I can't hear very well out mm. of the TV. Yeah. What What Samsung's come up with is a voice amplifier, active voice amplifier pro. And what it can do, it can actually extract the dialogue from the TV show or movie you're watching and enhance it so that it can actually can be heard above the background noise. Mm. So say someone's mowing the lawn outside or someone's vacuuming or using the blender in the kitchen yep. or something, you can still hear the voices above all that sound. Yeah. So it extracts it. And that, that that's a game changer, I think, for a lot of a lot of viewers will buy it for that very feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to hear it properly. It's simple things like that. Yeah. Because and I you've had to kind of say this a fair bit lately, but it really doesn't matter how these TVs differ to last year. It yeah. matters because there's changes. Yeah. What matters is how vastly different they'll be for someone who's buying from five years ago, exactly seven right. years ago, it, because that's yeah. the market. It's the it's the smartphone argument. You know, when, yeah. when Apple releases the I, oh, iPhone 15, oh, it's not much of a difference from last year, but last year's customer's not going to buy that one. If you've mm. got an iPhone 10, you're going to probably buy the 15. Just mm. same for these ones. And, and in my interview with Jeremy, I said, look, how easy are you going to make for customers to know what to look for here if they've, they haven't bought a TV for eight years? This mm. is all foreign to them. I think the biggest shock today will be the operating system. Yeah. They are, they look vastly different. Yeah, they do. The, every yeah. every app, every menu, every just the fact that when you click the button, it doesn't come up on the bottom. It's the whole screen now on home yeah. and stuff like that. It's a very different process. Exactly. Um, and uh, Samsung, by the way, have been a uh, top global manufacturer for 18 years in a row. Mm. Pretty good. Just quietly back on OLED. Yeah, let's be real. They yeah. talk about all the, you know, they think this and they've anti glared that, and but yeah. in the end, they need to be in the OLED space yeah. because LG is dominating LG's because they've it. been there eleven yeah. years. Killing Sony's it. doing it as well, but they're using the LG panels. So, yes, um, yeah. LG dominate OLED, and yeah. let's be real. Whenever you read the the best eyes, like Stephen's, you know, high end t- TV reviews, will always tell you OLED's mm. the best technology, definitely, right? Yeah, definitely. So if you asked and you're pushed. We'll always say OLED's oh, best. I said to someone yeah. this week, look, it depends on your budget range of things. I personally would every day of the week get the Neo QLED because of the look of the TV. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Nice, it's sleek. borderless. It's edge, unbelievable, yeah, and no edge. one has been able to do anything yeah. like that. And the, the, let's the Neo QLED quality is, mate. It's not far off OLED. It's bloody let's face close. It, it's really good, but it's not OLED yeah. quality, right? No. And so Samsung yeah. knows that. And so yeah. when they see that OLED yeah. is listed as being the best picture quality available. Yeah. They have to be in that space. Yeah, true. And that's and why they're in that have space. Have you ever heard LG saying anything about their brightness of their OLEDs? No. <laughs> Never. Like I reviewed the Samsung OLED and I'm gonna do the new one in a week or so. There's no you can put this in the brightest room in your house, it's still great. Yeah. It's not the, the we're Samsung, talking about we're talking about computer measured brightness. Yeah, I know, but 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 Samsung still want to preserve Neo QED as the hero product, right? Yeah, which is why which, which keep, it is. They'll keep pushing the boundary on yes. of brightness. And it's also why the Neo QLED have the bigger sizes. 98 inch. Yes. You're not gonna get it. I think the biggest OLED you can buy from Samsung is 77 inch. Yes. So that's again another. They're preserving the flagship as Neo QLED, mm. and fair enough. LG have their OLEDs are the flagships, yes. and there's never once been. And I mate, I've, I've got been, I've had an OLED, LG OLED. I've got one in my office and one in my bedroom. Never, ever, ever have I said that TV is not bright enough. Let's talk about size. LG yeah. talked about uh, you yeah. know forty percent of TVs being seventy five inches yep. or more. Samsung said to me that in last year. 85, 85 inches became the average size yep. in Australian homes. No, and they, they did some research. Uh, 85 inches is also the fastest growing screen yeah. size. Yep. But here's the one that I love. They talk to anyone who owns a 75-inch TV or bigger, so big screen owners. Yep. 95% of big screen owners <laughs> love their TV. Yeah. The other 5% wish they went bigger. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this just establishes. I don't like it. Our I love it. you will, buddy. Go big or go home. Exactly, mate. You're exactly. mad if but, the first thing you do isn't measure the space. And I did put this on Jeremy in my in my interview. Why couldn't they just go? It's 98 inches their biggest TV. I said, why didn't you just go the extra two? Go the extra two to 100, mate. What does he say, spoiler? He said, man, big enough. It's factory base. Yeah. 
a lot of those factors. But um, mm. it's the, but the the point is also they made was the fact that they're going to offer 98 inch in uh, a range of models. So basically. Reading between the lines, they're going to offer a crystal UHD 98 inch, so they're affordable 98 inch. Yeah. Then they're also going to offer one, of course, in 4K and 8K um, yes. QLED as well. Yeah. So the story there is that a, a, a 98 inch TV at all price points. Yeah. Basically. So yeah, size is important. Um, let's can we switch off TVs for a yep. second and talk about the music frame? Yes. Great product. You saw it. We saw it at CES. I didn't. Didn't you see it? Well, I saw, I glanced at it at CES, and I initially thought that it was a digital frame. I didn't thinking, go to the pre-show event, and it wasn't at the show. Yeah. No, I saw it. Oh, where did I see it then at CES? I'm sure, I saw, sure it was on the it stand. Was it was not at the stand. Well, I saw it. I think it was might have been. Anyway, I initially thought it was a digital frame, and it's not a digital frame. It's a proper frame. You put a, actually a physical mm. picture in there, but it's a speaker. Hmm. And the inspiration from that was from the frame television. So the frame, when it's a TV, is a TV, right? Great QLED TV. When it's not a TV, it's a frame. I was so a, confused frame. by this at CES because yeah. I assumed it was like dial I thought it was up. a digital frame. I yeah. thought you're on Spotify yeah. and it uses the album art to fill the screen. Yeah. That's what I thought. It's not. You it's put a photo in a big screen. Yeah. Or you order for about $100 US dollars, you order, like an you acrylic upload a thing, photo yeah, yeah. and they or an, or an album or something, they send it to you, right? Yeah. Now that's a hundred bucks to get that done. It's like fifty US plus yeah. shipping. So let's just call it a hundred bucks, right? The frame costs seven hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. The music frame. But it's a, you know what? It's a good speaker though. It sounds it's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. And I love how in this setup where we saw the TVs, they had the frame TV, and on either side left they had right. the frame music frames. So it was the speakers for the TV. Set as left and right. Yeah. Or they had another TV which rear, just had as five rears. of them around. Yeah. So they I don't your, think they were set up as rear. Well, you can set them up as rear speakers if you want, but not yeah. left and right rears. They uh, can just be a rear, so just generic a rear rears. emulation. I was really? told. Really? Yes. Okay, right. So don't so, think you can set up a five. So not as good okay. as a soundbar rear speakers. No, uh, definitely right. not. Okay. okay. Now I look and I go, look, seven hundred fifty bucks. It's it's a bit bit much. Yeah. But here's how Jeremy sold me on it again because he's a salesman. That's probably why he did it. <laughs> but you think of the person buying a Samsung frame TV. Yeah. It's actually not Samsung's best quality TV. Yeah. It just looks the looks part. Nice, it yeah. fits the purpose. Yep. Now, if you're that person, do you want a big black ugly soundbar on the bench below it or no. on the wall below it? No. How would you prefer two beautiful frames with your choice of albums or pictures or yeah. photos or whatever in them? Yeah. My only thought is, and I look forward to someone with acoustic tendencies to review it because it's a it's a frame. And yeah. then inside that, let's call it a five mil gap is your acrylic. So there's a five mil gap yeah. for the audio to come out. I like, reckon isn't there some muffling? Isn't it no. better to have a direct speaker at you? I reckon the middle part. And I haven't seen it yet. I'm, I'm getting. No, it's I want, I'm getting one for review. But but the middle of it. Isn't there any? Nope. Are they sort of firing in the middle, so towards each nope. other? Okay. Can you remember like the it's Sonos? It's firing outside. The Sonos subwoofer. Remember how in the middle it had the two the two speakers firing against each other? In the middle, it doesn't have that in the in the guts of the of the thing. I'm gonna have to. I, ha- I haven't heard. I heard it briefly at the at the event, mm. but haven't want to sit down Look, and listen. They, to it they told me it's engineered to send the sound yeah. out that gap. Yeah. Okay. It's just a very small gap. Yeah. Right. When you think of a speaker, you think of this thing with a big round speaker yeah, that right. sends the audio out to you. Yeah. There's whereas, no. There's no. This is like putting uh, no an hour in front of it. No. Yeah. Right. Well, you know what? There's technology where you know the remember Sony had the TV. The the sound comes from the screen. Yeah. So is that sort of similar to that? No. Or? Because it's looking an acrylic forward to thing that clips it. on. I yeah. pulled it off. It's yeah, right. just four unless plastic it fires, clips. Unless it fires out and up around like a TV does, but Pretty in better much. quality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, we'll have to review it. I, I, yeah. I think it would have been at nine hundred and ninety nine dollars a better product if it was a pitch, it was a digital yeah. display. But then, then does that, your album does that, well, that it'll make it a lot more expensive than that, wouldn't it? Well, I'm just saying that's where I would have put that price. It. I think yeah. 749 is expensive yeah. for what this for, is. Okay. So you prefer to have it a digital screen while you're at it, have it a digital screen. Yeah, and pay yeah. a little tiny bit more. But that then becomes a little mini frame TV, doesn't it? That's, mini, yeah, but it, mini if frame. its capabilities are – but that's great. Yeah. Imagine it's beside your TV and when you play music, it plays the album art. Yeah. And when you're playing music, yeah, it, play, so. it shows yeah. more artwork. Maybe. Or yeah. photos that you take. I think they. I think Samsung wanted to have a distinction between the frame TV and the music frame. A hundred percent, I get it. But yeah. it, it, I'm still confused. Plus, by cost it. would have been. And I think it, it would have cost a lot more than nine hundred. For seven hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. You can get a Sonos. But it's a one. decent size, though, isn't it? Yeah. Like, what, what would it be? Sort of about tw- what twelve inches, like a foot. 
I don't know, like 30, 35 centimetres? Centimetres, 36 <laughs> centimetres. Uh, like 30 centimetres is 12 inches, right? So it was about that big. What are the one, JBL Authentics? They're like, see, for 750 bucks, you can get the mid-range yeah. JBL Authentics. Yeah, they're great. That's a nice-looking yeah. speaker That's and a beautiful. way better speaker. And you can carry it. What's the one you can carry around? The 300? You the can carry that around? Yeah. Oh. That's a great speaker. If I'm buying a speaker, yeah, I just I've just received actually the turn the spinner, and I'm going to connect it to the to the authentics mm. to create a it's retro a sound. sound. It's yeah, a really yeah. good sound. Yeah, it's cool. Best, <laughs> anyways, I'm going to JBL. But um, yes, yeah. so Samsung and now, what price about pricing? Wise, yeah, that's price all pricing. Wise, so remember, LG's prices were definitely lower. Not a not every dollar, but you know, especially in the mid to high end. So yes. sixty five inch LG, I found one that was six hundred dollars less. Yeah. And eighty six inch LG, I found one that was thirteen hundred dollars less. Right yep. now, eighty five inch, sixty uh, D QLED. Yep. So that's like a mid to low range QLED for them. Yep. Uh, eighty five inches. Last year, RRP was four six one nine. Yeah. This year, three seven nine five, eight hundred and twenty dollars less. Wow. That's pretty good. So this is Samsung. The, Q, the QN 800ED. Inch, no, yeah. QN, no, 85 inch 60D. Okay. Now the 85 inch Neo QLED 4K, yep. 85 inch last year was 7,000 bucks. Yep. This year, five and a half. Wow. Fifteen hundred dollars. I think I don't think LG could have gone in the market with prices that are lower than last year, and Samsung could not have followed them. They could not do that. That's yeah, why I think they leaked that. them online and had yeah. them on sales. So remember and we all spoke about them a few yeah. weeks ago. You had them on EFTM. They were on yeah. JB's. Her, I think that's website. why they had to do that because so they, they were worried about LG yeah, getting right. a head on them. Okay, but let's give them credit. The prices are better. It's great value. Yeah, the value you're getting. So technically, a better TV and cheaper, and and again goes mm. against what we've always said. Look for last year's model if you want a bargain. Actually, look for this year's model well, if you want a bargain. In the run out, yeah, it could be quite wild. The discount wow. on last yeah, year's true, TV, true, it could be well ahead of that. Because you got to remember, yeah. this is all playing up to a mid July, yeah, absolute sensation on TV sales because of the yeah. Olympics. Yeah, true. And they did mention that, eh? That sales, uh, I think they mentioned during the before the footy finals last year. They had like a 25% jump in sales right. uh, for that particular period. No doubt. Great excuse to get a new TV, don't you reckon? Hey, love. Always. Let's get a new telly. The footy finals are coming. Or the Olympics are coming up. <laughs> what would be cheaper? We go to Paris to watch the Olympics or buy a new 98-inch Samsung TV? What do you reckon? <laughs> That's a good point. Might be cheaper just to get the telly. Well, actually, love, <laughs> outside of the Olympics, we might be able to get there for this price. But during the Olympics with accommodation prices and things, yeah, it's gonna probably be can't afford that. it. Yeah. Let's just get a beautiful 10, Neo 10, QLED. 10000 that's nothing. Neo QLED 8K with yes, Stan 4K wow, on it, upscaled. Wolf. Yeah. Because Stan's going to have the Olympics. Stan's going to have the Olympics in 4K. I assume so. Yeah, you'd, you'd expect so. Uh, yeah. Is this, is this the first 4K Olympics or the last ones? Were in the, what was the Rio? Was not Rio. Tokyo. Where was the, Tokyo. Was that, was that in? I that was 4K. I think it was. It was the first 4K Olympics. have them in 4K? I think so. In yeah. Australia? I think so. I yeah. We're both old and forget. <laughs> but Samsung, well you done. Laughed off. Well done. Yeah, well done. Uh, yeah. All of the details of Samsung's uh, new TVs, techguide.com.au and EFTM.com. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech. Well, uh, Samsung weren't the only TV brand at it this week with their new product. Uh, Hisense also stepped into the ring and I've got to say, uh, impressive. So brighter. Uh, bolder, bigger, you know, you can't go past, hmm. Trev, 110-inch TV. Wild. Now, I saw this, you saw this at CES. I'm filthy. I was stunned. Yeah. What, well, what are you filthy about? Because someone's going to have a bigger TV. <laughs> Trevor can't handle someone being bigger than him, eh? Is that right? But well, um, When it comes to TVs, you know, you've got you to have your standards, folks. <laughs> So uh, I think, uh, and we've seen the mini LED. Mm. So this is mini LED. So it's, look, it's to, to explain it, the, the Hisense's ULED technology is basically quantum dot with their with their picture engine. So it's it's basically similar to the Samsung's QLED. It is technology. a QLED. It is actually Neo in many cases because yeah. Neo yeah. QLED for Samsung yeah. is mini, mini LED, LED with a quantum dot. Yep. ULED today for. Most yeah. of the ULED range is mini LED and quantum dot, so yeah. it is comparable. Let's be straight. Most up. definitely, it's just and, confusing, and, unfortunately. And Hisense prides itself too on uh, the not the quality, the brightness, uh, the dimming zones. I, I I love how Hisense markets sort of the 
the the dimming zones and explains it really well in terms of how many dimming zones there are, how many backlights there are. Yeah. Those numbers, I think, play. They, they play well because customers think, well, more, more means better. Yeah. And so 20,000 dimming zones on the UX, 5,000 on the on the, U, the U8 and U7 uh, with Quantum Dot, Dolby Vision as well, Dolby Vision IQ, 144 hertz too which is now standard across the whole ULED range, all those things I just mentioned, mm. standard. And IMAX certification as well used to be only the U8 and above. Now it's across the board. Yeah. Back big on, improvement. Back on big TVs. So there's going to be three <laughs> yep. for high sense. There'll be 200 inches and the one, the UX, will be the 110. Yep. Now they haven't announced the pricing on the UX 110. That'll be later in the year. What do you reckon? And the then, U7N, they haven't revealed the pricing on because the pricing they've put in is last year's U7K. Yeah. Now, so the, it's strange Just to be clear, it's 6999 last year's last pricing. Last year's pricing so and you're last saying, year's model. Okay. Right? So yeah. when they bring this year's model U7 out, NAU. I don't think it's going to be cheaper. I think it'll be more. I think it'll be 75 right. because their Q7 NAU yep. is six grand, 5999 Okay. I don't know that a thousand bucks is enough of a jump from the Q7 to the U7, but yeah. I think it's going to be six nine 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 or less. Like that's the problem yeah. is it's going to be it's not a dramatic change like Samsung yeah. and LG have had. That's all I'm calling out. Still, Samsung's though, uh, iSense's yeah. argument there is we're always been value. Yeah, right. and they are. Yeah, true. Yeah, but but uh, like I think the word that I used during CES and the word high sense used was attainable. So okay. the attainable mm. technology, like yeah. look. You, if you want twelve grand to drop, well, what are the Samsung ninety-eight inch, eight K QLEDs? It, 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 and good luck to you. Then you're doing very well. But and and to be fair, Samsung also have their Crystal UHD. We mentioned is mm. is going to be the more price conscious choice for customers yep. for them for ninety-eight inch. But and we the, don't know the, what yeah. we don't know what number these are going to drop in retail as well. Yeah, because five nine 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 for the Q seven. Yeah, that's got to drop at five four nine nine. And there will be times I reckon pre Olympics. That's a five thousand dollar TV. Yeah, possibly even a four and a half. Wow. So, what do you reckon? Like the UX AU, which is the flagship yeah. of flagship flagships, model. hundred and ten inch TBC. It's got to be price. nine 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 nine. It can't be more. Oh, it has to be what? more because a seventy five is eight. Seventy five is H, it? mate. I'm thinking it's going to be twelve or something. Twelve grand. Yeah, honestly. probably maybe more. Twelve or thirteen. Do, do you remember grand last year? Remember the? Sense. Do you remember the UX last year? I think they had a sixty five and a mm. seventy five. Or no, 55 and a 65. Yeah. The bigger TV was way more expensive than the one below it. Is. It is. And it's still now yeah. 65 yeah. inches, five grand. The yeah. 75 inches, is nine grand. So what's that? So that's an extra three, 3,000, 4,000. You're right. It's going to be 12 and a half, 13. I think it'll be 13, 14 maybe. Yeah. It's a lot of money. Yeah. But it's 110 inches, but it's massive. Okay. But th- yeah. let's be real. You're yeah. 100, you're, you've got $13,000. Yeah. This It just comes back to that thing. Am I trying to fill that space? Yeah. Or am I getting the best thing for thirteen grand? Yeah. Okay. Because this is a great, yes. unbelievable TV. Yeah. But does it match a seventy-seven or eighty-five OLED, or, or does it match a Q and an EO eight? You open up your Samsung pricing. You right. got your Samsung pricing. Um, okay. Pretend I do. Yep. So if I'm want to say I want to buy an eighty-five inch TV. Right? Yeah. Well, and, here's the thing: they didn't actually yeah. put all their pricing in their press release. So some of it you got to get on their website. So let me let me just go to Samsung's website. Great yeah. podcasting, people! <laughs> if this was one of those US podcasts, they'd have a producer over there. <laughs> We'd be looking at the screen while yeah. they Google it. But this is us, folks. Yeah, men of the people, just real, real people. We're googling for ourselves, okay? Yes. Um, all right. So TVs. <laughs> what do you want? An 85 inch. So let's talk because that that's the size they've got in common, right? 85 right. inch. Yep. So you're well. Isn't it strange how the UX AU, right? The the top size. So if you don't want 110, hmm. the next size down is 75. So there's no 85 inch. No. In that area, in that's that right. in that class. That's true. So, so do we that's need a big to look drop. At a 75 then? So if you want an 85 inch TV, you don't want 100, then you need to look at the U8 or the U7. Now the the yeah. X at 75 inches is how much? Eight triple nine. Samsung Neo QLED 8K, yep. 75 inch, yeah. eight triple nine. Whoa, really? So flagship. 80, now now the flagship. Hang on, what's the 65? 65 6499. Four triple nine. That's see, that's where their difference is. The they've got a smaller jump in price for Samsung. So I'll yeah. give you this: eighty-five inch Neo QLED eight K, yep, eleven nine nine nine. Now, if Hang the on, price, 75 inch. if the price is the seventy-five, is the same for Samsung 
yeah. and Hisense. Yeah. And the 85 for Heist for Samsung is 12 grand. The 110. Yeah. That could be 15 grand, could mate. Could be bigger. Yeah, wow. Well, like, like you just said before, the That's jump. Wild. Like it's only a thousand bucks. So the UXAU, thousand bucks, 55 to 65. Mm. Yet it's, what's that? So five to nine, it's, it's 4,000 from 65 to 75. That extra 65 to 75 is a massive jump. That so can you sense. imagine the jump from 75 to not 85, not 95, not 105, 110. So you're talking how many? 35 extra centimetres Honestly, there. that doesn't make any sense. There's got to be a problem with That's that gonna number. That's going to be double. That I think it's going to be double. Wrong. Like, no, well, eight triple nine for the 75 That's got to be wrong. Well, that's straight out of their press release, mate. That's cut and pasted from their press release. The UXAU 75-inch, eight triple nine. So the 110, mate, I'm thinking it's going to be 16,000. It's going to be maybe twice the price of the 75-inch. If they can bring that in under 14, or, mate, under 13 would be a remarkable. It must be right because yeah. last year's model. No, yeah. uh, this does say new. 85 inch, 9999. 75 inch. Which model? 4999. Which, which, which UXAU. One? Well, they've only got 55, 65, 75, and 110. Well, their website has a 75. What? That's 4999. Oh, is that last year's model, but is it's that a run out? new. And the model numbers are the same year on year. UXAU, 75 inch is how much? 4999. What? That's a typo. Because the new one, see here on their press release, yes, says but what I'm saying, mate, is their press release is wrong and the website's what? right. What? How can that be? Or because the model numbers are the same, we're actually seeing. I think that's last year's last model. year's model, that's but it's the same model. model number. I'm going to look up the press release once again to make sure I'm not not having a. No, I've copied the same. I've got the yeah. same thing on my mate. Yeah. So you're 100. percent It's not that. Okay. I don't know. Confusing. Not changing a model number doesn't help. Yeah. Do you reckon? Put an extra letter or number Just in there. Just hey. something, folks. Yeah. All right. And details. we're happy to review the 110-inch, by the way, too, if you want to bring it around. If someone's going <laughs> to – like, I'm not paying again to have someone change my freaking TV at home, okay? Yeah. So That's with a 110-inch one, one inch TV, right, I think I asked this question at CES. Mm. For, I said, how the hell are you going to get that home? Well, I suppose to be Jeremy a Senior about, special service. about just big TVs, 98s yeah. and things, because yeah. they've got 398s at Samsung, yeah. right? It's it's a two man lift guaranteed, and there yeah. are some retailers who, for OH and S reasons, are saying it's a four man lift. What? So one hundred and ten inch would be a five man lift then. That's a I lot. Mean, it's, a, but it's, it's not. It's going to be a heavy. Not only heavy, mate, but it's big. It was the biggest big and box unwieldy. I've ever seen when yeah. the hundred came into my house. Yeah. Wow. So much the hundred and ten. <laughs> it's just wild. <laughs> wow. Wild. Love numbers. to see it. I did see it at CES. It was it yeah. was absolutely gobsmacking at CES. Did yeah. you? Would you agree? Hundred percent. It was amazing. And by the yeah. way, we still haven't got TCL's announcement for their hundred and fifteen. Fifteen, yeah, jeez. So yeah. they're gonna they're gonna pit them at the post Olympic style. So with hundred and ten's not due till June. Is it don't June? Know. May say. June doesn't say. Before the Olympics, will it be? I don't know. Well, it's June is before the Olympics. But is it in June? The, well, that's isn't the, the press release never said that either, did it? No, I think so. It just said TBC. Exactly. May onwards. Mm. Which could be June, could be July, could be December. <laughs> I doubt it. I'm just saying. I doubt it. In the without the presence positive, of facts, mate. I can't be sure. <laughs> Fair enough. Mate. All right, Fair we'll enough. let you know though. All the details at techguide.com.au and eftm.com. Everything about tech you never wanted to know. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech. Thanks to the great people at Netgear, the Orbi range will light up your home with Wi-Fi, cover your home in a dome of Wi-Fi, full speed, everything you're paying for. If you're paying for high-speed internet, right, you can gigabit internet. By the way, that's going to get faster if you've got HFC. It's going to be up to 750 to 900 meg instead of the six to 700 you're getting now. But anyway, moving on, uh, if you're paying for really high-speed internet and you've got the latest devices, you've got Samsung's latest phone or you've got latest laptops, which have got the latest connectivity technology, None of that matches together without the best connectivity in between. So get yourself an Orbi Wi-Fi system with the latest technology so that even if you've only got one of those fancy new devices, in a few years from now, you'll have many more and they'll all be able to take advantage of the high speeds, the range, the efficiency of the network. That's what Netgear does. Finding the perfect Orbi is very easy. A few simple questions on their website, netgear.com.au. will take you right to the, uh, to the uh, product finder. Find your Orbi and it'll help you find the best product 
for you. Check it out, netgear.com.au. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech with Trevor Long and Stephen Fennec. Now, earlier today, some radio, someone, somewhere sent me a link to an ABC uh, online article about an Optus customer losing $10,000, their digital identity in a phone porting SIM swap scam. Bottom line, bloke lost 10000 bucks. Yeah. Now, I'm a bit confused by this, so I investigate. I talk to Optus as best I can. I try to understand how does someone lose money and also how, do, how does a porting scam happen because it, you and I have ported our phone numbers yep. many a time. When you get a new SIM from a new telco, you go to make the switch, you get a text to your old SIM yep. saying... Did you approve this? Uh, if you this? authorize this, yes. Like here's you got to click here, you got to authorize a code or something like that, right? Yep. You get a text to your old number. Yep. There's a screenshot on the ABC website that says Optus it from Optus. We haven't received a response from you so far for the SIM replacement request. So your SIM will be replaced. We'll go ahead shortly. That's a SIM replacement, not a SIM porting Port, situation. Right. So let me explain the two different scenarios here. A SIM replacement and the example I gave at EFTM is you're out on the harbour on a boat and yep. you drop the phone over the edges in the bottom of the harbour. Yep. Or you drop it off a bridge and you can't dive down and get your phone. You've yep. lost your phone. Yeah. And the SIM. Yep. So you go to Optus, Telstra, Vodafone, whoever, and you say, lost my phone. I've got a new one here. Can I get a new SIM card? Yeah. They the give same you a, number. They give you a new bit of plastic. Yep. They authorise you for your ID and everything, and they give you a new bit of plastic, and your old phone number, your normal number, works on that bit of plastic. Yep. So it's like when you, you lose your SIM, your SIM breaks or your phone breaks or whatever. It's a yep. legitimate thing. And it can't be done unless you authenticate your identity with yeah. the telco, right? So it's SIM swap and porting That's a SIM has swap. to be authorised. That's a SIM swap. Yes. Nothing to do no with porting. porting. Yeah. That's a SIM swap. Right. A SIM porting is when you go to a servo, you grab a Boost Mobile SIM or a Lamara or someone like that, yep. and you put it in a new phone and you follow the instructions and it says, you know, do you want to keep your number? Yes, I do. I want my number. Yep. I want to keep my number. It goes through a process saying, what's, what's your old telco? What's your account number? What's yep. your date of birth? A few personal details. Yep. And it submits. And then it sends an SMS to your active existing number with Optus, whoever you're with, yep. and says, do you really want to do this? This is going to happen. If you don't do something, it's going to happen. Yep. And you have to essentially authorize it. And then your new service becomes active on Labar or Boost or wherever you are. Yep. That's SIM porting. Yep. What happened to this chap is both. But it happened in sequence, and this is really critical. They did not port his number away to another telco first. First thing they did, my guess, I haven't spoken to the guy and I haven't forensically looked at it, but let me tell you what happened. His details were on the dark web. Few, his email address appeared a few times, 16 different passwords. Hackers went, all right, yeah, let's get into his Gmail. They tried every password. They got in. They yeah. got into his email. Yeah. Then they went, looked through his emails for invoices. Oh, he's an Optus customer. Okay. They went to Optus. My Optus. Let's reset the password. Mm. They've reset the password. How does that happen? Through your email. Hey, they've got access to your email. They've approved the reset password. They've got a new password. They're in the Optus app. They request a new SIM, a SIM swap, probably with an eSIM because it happens yeah. instantly. Yep. They get an eSIM, eSIM. They download it on their phone. They activate it. It might take an hour. It might take three, but they activate it. This guy then gets a text message saying, we've swapped your SIM. All good. Happy days. Yeah. His phone stops working oh. because his SIM is no longer active. The scammer now has an Optus phone number with an Optus account and the My Optus app and details. Yeah. Then they go to Joe Bloggs Telecom, get yeah. a SIM card and port the number away oh. using his Jeez. details and everything they know about him. And yeah. then they log onto his bank oh. and they request a $10,000 transfer. And what has happened? Sends an SMS to his number. Which, which is, is now, now with Joe Bloggs Telco in the hands of the scammer. He puts in the four-digit code, money's transferred, you've lost wow. 10 grand. It's not a simple no. SIM porting and, scam. And let's face it too, unlucky the guy just happened to be one person plucked out of someone's details in yeah, the dark web. There's 10 million people who yeah, are scammed out of Medibank, Latitude, yeah, Optus. There's yeah, a right. bunch of people's details online. Yeah. This is what they're trying so to do pretty, to you. So pretty uh, technical too. You need to have sophisticated alerts on every email. Yeah. You need to be alert for weird emails that come in about yeah. changing passwords that you didn't do. Yeah. And if you get them a lot, like I get these weird ones, booking.com. Someone's trying to log into my booking.com account. Good luck. What? I've never used it. It doesn't have a credit card on it, but good yeah. luck. So I get them so often, I went, you know, I'm going to change the password anyway, yeah, yeah. just to be sure. 
Okay. You've got to respond to those and things. And two-factor authentication for everything. Like, so, so the warning you get when you're porting a number is, is like a form of two-factor authentication. Exactly. Yeah. So if you don't have two-factor authentication, and look, you're I, in trouble. I would argue that you move as quickly as you can away from SMS two-factor authentication. I don't know if you use any apps, but I mm-hmm. use... Um, What's yeah, mine called? Orthy. Yeah, I use Orthy. Orthy. Yeah, I got that. So if I want to log into my... Oh, it's going to make me change my password. Um, <laughs> I've got my Zero accounts, my yeah. Gmail, Zero. my Instagram, my Facebook. Gmail. I haven't got Gmail. Um, I'm going to put Gmail my in My Coinspot crypto account, um, my domain accounts, even my Uber account has Orthy. So if you log in, if I said now live on our podcast, my Uber account, email address and password, you can't log in unless you've got, you've got my Orthy. Orthy. Yeah. Yeah, even I if you port, even if you port my phone number away, you can't get in. Yeah, I got Authy for zero. Yep. Um, net registry, you know my for Your my domains, site, yeah. my domains, uh, and Twitter, because yeah. Twitter don't remember how Twitter they, yeah, they, they went away from SMS. SMS or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, so you're use, saying you can do it for said, Gmail as well? I'm pretty, or, yeah, I'm pretty sure Gmail. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to switch. Um, That's great. And or G- Google has an authenticator app as well. That's great. Oh, no. Google Facebook Gmail. I would use. Google normally uses okay. Open the up YouTube your YouTube app. Yeah, yes. YouTube or something else. That's, that's, an, that's pretty, pretty solid. secure. Yeah, yeah. pretty solid. Um, but look, I guess it's just one of those things where I go, this story could blow out of proportion a bit. Yeah. And it is bad. I feel really sorry for Mister. Ant. Someone here. And noise. <laughs> um. Someone, Mr. Ryder, Andrew Ryder, Ryder. Right, from Townsville, his business owner. I feel bad for him. I yeah, really do. That's shocking. But it's like this story is written. Optus customer loses ten ten thousand um, dollars. This story is written to abuse Optus, mm-hmm. and this is not Optus's fault. No, it's nothing no, to no, do with right. it. You're absolutely so, right. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't we can't blame Optus for that. No, I think it's poorly written in that sense. Definitely. So um, we're going to be recording for another hour here. Sorry, man. So, uh, yeah. Sorry, someone just walked mean? into the office. Um, <laughs> that's all right. Um, so I just worry about how it's blown out of proportion a bit. Yeah, like it's blaming Optus on this thing. Well, like, it's not real. Well, but no. So the oh, sim, like I'm the best. The, I'm happy to bag Optus for the best. But the Sim swap though, <laughs> the Sim swap should should he have received a notification for that? Or did he receive a notification for that? Or he, not? did he authorize he it by mistake? He or? didn't. Right. And the message he shows on the ABC website says we haven't received a response from you. Yeah. So look. Maybe there was one. Maybe he ignored it. I yeah. don't know. But even if there was, like this, let me, all that stuff I just explained in five minutes could yeah. theoretically be done in real time, in yeah. that amount yeah. of time. Yeah. Because if you've, if you're the scammer and you've got it all listed there for yeah. you, the websites are open and everything, mate, if you, if I was in your email, Stephen, yeah. I reckon I could reset your Facebook account faster than you'd get the email on your phone, realize that it's something weird going on, and then go to your computer and stop it from happening. Right. But, That's uh, how powerful your email is. But have a, a date you have to get the notification on Facebook, isn't it? Can't you choose? Like I don't get it, it comes through it's on a, Facebook as a notification. It yeah. doesn't matter. The okay. example is if I'm in your email, yeah. this bloke's email was hacked. I've got no doubt yeah, about right. it. Right. Okay. That's the risk. Yeah. So because he, he never had two factor authentication Correct. on the email. Yeah. So there's he. Yeah, you, right. Okay. You've got to work on that. Unlucky. Very unlucky. Unlucky. Anyway, the details and all the kind of how to protect yourself are up at uh, EFTM.com. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech. Well, the 3G shutdown yes. is approaching, and we should talk about the fact that Telstra are being a bit proactive on these on this front. They are going to have a SMS service so that you can tell if your device needs uh, needs replacing. Yeah. So basically what they've done, they set up the service because they're, they're shutting their network down on June 30, 2024. Yep. And uh, customers can then text uh, to a, a special number. So if you text th- the number three to 3498. Very hard to explain, isn't it? Have you done this on the radio? Uh, not yet, no. It's so hard yeah. to explain. So what you do, <laughs> if from the phone that you think is it going to work, yeah. you send the text from that device mm-hmm. and it will send you a message back to either say – uh, you, it's time to act. You have to change, or it'll say thanks for using the checker. Your device is compatible. So basically, yeah. you are. And so you're we all talked. Good. We talked recently about the minister's issues, right? Yeah. With this whole switch off, and there's Telstra said there's 113,000 people using 3G phones right now on their network. Yep. Okay, so that's 100,000 yeah. people that urgently need to do something, yeah. right? Plus, there's probably another many hundred thousands. Who are using 4G phones that are not Volte compatible 
yeah. which won't be able to call triple zero after the switch off. That's the issue too. Yeah, that yeah. is what you can check yeah. with this. So this yes. simple text, the number three. So this checks the Volte compatibility. Also checks yeah. Volte compatibility. Yeah. The number yeah. three to 3498. Now, this is not about our listeners. Our listeners and this is just for Telstra phones, customers, right? yeah? Yes. Oh, Telstra Belong customers. and Boost works as well. I've had okay. people test right. it. So any Telstra network no. users? Aldi, no. Oh. Belong and Boost because really? they're actually Telstra customers. Oh. It all works, right? Okay, right. But, but not yeah. Aldi customers? No, because they're not really Telstra customers. Okay. They're a separate business. They've got a separate pocket of the Telstra yes. network. Yes, okay. whereas Boost and Belong are just Telstra customers okay. under a new marketing brand, right? Right. Um, the, thing, the thing I worry about is not our audience. They, they've all got 4G and 5G phones. Yeah. You've got to think about your neighbour. You've got to think about your parents, your grandparents. Grandparents, yeah, exactly the People right. that have got a yeah. good phone. It's been yeah. a great phone for like 10 years or so. Can I have that back, please? Um, they've had a great phone for like 10 years yep. or so. And they think it's going to work for a while, yep. but it's like they're the ones that are going to tr dial triple zero next yep. next month or something. Absolutely, yeah. And not be able and, to and do And when that. it's too late. So it, the worst case scenario is that you haven't done this check. No one's checked on you. Oh, no. You need to ring triple zero after the 3G shutdown and you can't. Yeah. That's and, the big issue. Here. And let's be, yeah. I'll say it again. The time you find out your phone doesn't work yeah, is when you late. need triple zero. Yeah, exactly right. So you got till June. End of June, uh, if you're a Telstra customer, end of September. Is it September if you're a, an Optus, Optus customer? An Optus. I spoke yeah. to Optus. They don't yeah. have a similar tool, a checker. Yeah. They're just, just basically to, saying, yeah. please check. and Go into a store. We're talking to our customers. Yeah. They're communicating with you and all well, that Telstra kind of Telstra says but, to take, if you're not sure, take your device. Show the SIM, the uh, SMS if you're not sure of it, into yeah. a store. Or there's even a number you can ring uh, as well. So you can ring 132200 as well if you want to find that out also. Mm. Yeah. Very good. All right, all the details at EFM.com. Go. I'm going to lock the door from now on. Uh, good idea, nah, mate. Kevin, he's a neighbour. Yeah. But I think he was going to wait here until we finished the show. Yeah, right. <laughs> You'll be waiting a while. If you're wondering why we're looking off screen, yeah, he's one of your one of his tenant your tenant neighbours here, yeah, mate. Just, is he a nice guy? Lovely, or? lovely, lovely, bloke, guy. lovely bloke. Okay. And, uh, Are you going to share what he wrote oh, on that <laughs> bit of paper, mate? Or? Took a while too. No, yeah. on the weekend they're going to use a crane to trim some trees, and so I can't use my car park over there, so. Damn. I normally is that leave why, a car. Is that why didn't he just leave that note on your door? He just walked. He didn't in. have a pen and paper. I don't okay. know. <laughs> and then I like how I, Trev said we're going to be recorded for another hour, mate. And he goes, "Write it down." Here. He goes, "Can I write it down?" And the only piece of paper near me is the rundown. Yeah. So I turn the page, and then I think, "Does even know what's next in the show?" Of course, I know what's next, mate. I'm a pro, mate. All right. Well, here's what's next. This is <laughs> two blokes talking tech with Trevor Long and Stephen Fennec. Two Blokes Talking Tech, proudly supported by Arlo. And you know what? Arlo make a great range of cameras. We know we know their essential cameras, their floodlight cameras, their doorbells. But you know what? It You can make it even better if you choose to sign up to Arlo Secure. Arlo Secure can store up to 30 days of video events and recordings from anywhere. So if you've got multiple cameras, you're able to have them all stored up in the, crowd, talk, in the cloud. Talk to us, our yeah. audience. And you can also then tr you can also set up smart notifications, and by that I mean you can find out whether your notification is a person, mm -hmm. a package, a vehicle, or an animal. So you're not going to get those nuisance notifications of trees swaying in the breeze or cars driving past your house, which can be annoying. Uh, you'll get smarter notifications that matter. So customize also the areas that your camera detects. So again, another another reason to have this smart, the Arlo Secure is that you, the, the case I just mentioned where you see cars or trees swaying in the breeze, mm. you can just aim the camera to only detect movement in this area here. So you can actually set it up for and, and receive notifications for this area, these activity zones wherever you prefer. And that's all part of Arlo Secure. So yes, having your 30 days of video stored up in the cloud is a great help, a great advantage. But these other features, the smart notifications, setting up where you want your no notifications to come from is an ideal scenario as well. And well like if you're like me and you're at work and you want to see what your new gutters look like, oh. you can just log into your Arlo and look at the, look at the gutters. There you there go. They are beautiful. Have a happy days. <laughs> So, yes, protect your home, protect your business, protect what's important for you, Arlo.com. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech. Do you know when you're at big tech shows and you walk around and you see something and you think, should I have known about that? Yeah. Like it's a big brand or a big thing yep. and you think, what the hell? I was walking around 
IFA. It was not MWG. IFA. It was IFA in September. Okay. And there was a stand. It wasn't big. It was as big as this podcast studio, right? Right. And it was the Find My Network by Google. Ooh. And I'm like, hang on a minute. Do they call it Find My as well? It's uh, Find My Phone Network or something like that. Oh. Find My Device Network. And I thought, what's that? And then so it turns Apple, out Apple's got no copyright on the word "find," obviously. Obviously not. Um, <laughs> it turns out it's essentially the same thing as the Apple yeah. AirTags. Now they have launched this in the US. Now it's coming to the rest of the world, but there's something they're waiting for. And this is a fascinating thing. Basically, they've broadly said, I don't think they made a public statement, but broadly they've said we're waiting for Apple to support it. So you know how now, and I get this a lot on because I'm still using an Android phone. An AirTag is traveling with you. Uh, it doesn't say unknown device. It says an Apple AirTag is traveling with you. Yeah. And you can do all the same so things. you get the notifications on your Android, yeah. All the same things you can do as an Apple iPhone user with an yep. AirTag near you, yep. you can do on here. You can see that it's an AirTag. You can make it beep. You can do all those things, right? Yep. You get a map of where it's tracked you. It's brilliant. Nice. App Google has been waiting for Apple to include cross-platform uh, unknown tracker alerts on the iPhone. Yes. Which I think is unbelievably noble of them because yeah. essentially Find My is unbelievable. It's brilliant. Yeah. But the big narc in the world is it's it's being used for stalking. Now, I, I'm i not downplaying the yes. seriousness of that. Yes. But we have to understand that every technology gets used for evil and good and it is yeah. just is what it is, right? Yeah. But Apple has improved their, their systems and all those things to make it better, and it's it's as good as it can ever be. But what Google said is, we don't think we can put these products into the world unless iPhones can also yeah. let people know if there's someone with them. So I, yeah. I think that's great. I think that's admirable. Yeah. And, and and just on that, you, know, you get those alerts that are their tags following you. Yeah. Um, it just really makes it easy for the thief. The thief is going to get a notification there's an air tag following them. If they steal your stuff, you get an air tag. Yeah, but you don't get you get it you don't get it within two minutes. No, I know you get it like within an hour or so, don't you? So no, sometimes sometimes I don't get it for six hours. Yeah, okay. It's uh, variable. There's well, no there's no set. I'll time. give you an example. A good mate of mine um, had his uh, e bike stolen, mm. so they they cut through the chain to yep. get his e bike. Yeah, and he was using Find My to track them and track them to from Little Bay to Redfin. They jumped on a train at St. Peter's and went up here. And then 90 minutes in, two hours in, the air tag disappeared. They lost right. it. Battery so that pulled person, yep. Well, battery pulled it. Well, no, they knew there was an air tag there mm. and it potentially could have been them being warned that there's an air tag following yeah. them. So but whether the it takes, it stops tracking is because yeah. they pulled the bloody or, thing out. Or they just found the air tag and threw it away. They left it somewhere on the street. Well, then it would have still yeah. been tracked. It well, they, they, been tracked the it, the they tracked it to the gutter where they dropped it. Exactly, so yeah. It's, uh, well, here's my advice. If you're someone that's trying to protect your bike or your whatever yeah, it is, yeah. there are there's key rings, yes, yeah. but there are some seriously secure. And uh, free shout out to Derek at Try and Bite, T R Y and A N D B Y T E, yeah. Try and Bite com dot au. They've got a category of I think devices. If you go devices and Apple AirTag, there's a bunch of um, vaults. They, they the yep. brand is called Tag Vault. Now. You put. I've got one downstairs. It's like a keychain, but you can't get to the air tag without like a bloody tiny Allen key. Mm -hmm. So if this thing is beeping, tracking, you would need to rip it, rip the air, the key ring off. But then there's ones that um, can be like screw mounted in. You know, on a on a bicycle, they have the um, bottle the seat. Oh, yeah, the yeah. bottle. The thing. bottle holder. Yeah. You take the bottle holder off. Yeah. And there's one that goes underneath the bottle holder. Ah. And screws in, so they'd have to unscrew the whole bottle holder. Well, to find they'd it, they'd have yeah. to work out where it is yeah, for a start. Yeah, of course. Yeah, wow. So put a bit of extra effort in. Like yeah. I've got an air tag in the Cupra. Yep. Okay. It may. I know it will make a noise if they try and make it. You know, tell yeah. you where it is. It, but yeah. it's going to take them fifteen minutes right. to to find it and to get it out. Okay. So yeah. I I believe that in that time I'll definitely be in the car and I'll be on the police. Yeah, right. and I think I'll have a good chance of at least okay. knowing more yeah. about it. So you, so you're. I'm I think, okay with. I think the, my app, my app on my Merc can tell me where the car is. Oh yeah, I, just I, like because so there's a SIM dash card. Can. Yeah, yeah. So can my dash. Yeah, can. of course. Yeah, but of if course. they're if they're stealing a Mercedes Benz, yeah, I tell you right now, they know where the SIM card is. Uh, they're ripping the SIM card out. Where is the SIM card? Don't tell. I them. don't know. But don't tell them. I'm tipping. <laughs> I'm tipping before they seal it. They're going to work that yeah, out. Yeah, you reckon? Yes. Are they that specialised? You reckon? Yes. That would know that to yes. target those sort of vehicles. Yes. Come on, mate. Yes. That's like sounds like a SIM swap scam. Every day. out of a car. 
every day what of the week. What the hell is going but on? But I think the balance that we've found between the air tag being great for helping find things and the concern around stalking yeah. and, that and domestic yeah. violence and all those things. Fair call. Look, yeah. I, I, if, if it was me, yeah. I'd push it more towards preventing the theft. Yeah, I agree. I'm not saying I don't yeah. want to prevent domestic violence. I'm just saying yeah. the tracking part of it, Yeah, like... The, the, it's such a low part of the yeah, of the problem. I reckon, yeah, the mongrel the mongrel factor is probably one percent of, of and air tag. I'll use. tell you right now, yeah. and this is horrible yeah. thing to know if you're being stalked and you've yeah, got a you've yeah. got a domestic violence issue, mate. You can get trackers that can't that don't expose themselves like this. Yeah, that have you can. I'll give you an example. I'm not trying to help out the the stalkers here, but you could go and buy a pet tracker which has a four G. Yeah, you can put a four G SIM card in it. And a decent battery, and you know what? If you could some some way auxiliary power that in the car through the glove box while you get two minutes access to it, yeah. that thing's going to track. It's never going to beep. Yeah, it's never going to alert you on your pet, mobile phone. A pet doesn't have a phone <laughs> to but to say they're tracking you. Yeah, the, right. Those the non put it this way: if it's not a Find My device or yeah. a Find My device yeah, thing yeah. from Google, yeah, it's not going to have these anti-stalking features. Right, but I think the reason that these do have it is because they're the easiest accessible. True. The, the most obvious choice for people. Yeah. But, yeah. but what if the, for example, if the governments think this is something that needs to be done, which they haven't said, but yeah. they clearly put pressure on, why aren't they making any tracking device do the same thing? Yeah. Okay. I'm telling you, so it's like a bigger even, problem. Even like probably GPS. Like it's a bigger top stuff. problem than yeah, air right. tags. Yeah. In the, it, it, it just is. Okay. And you know, well, I remember when this issue came up, and 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 I I raised this with Apple. I said, look, if if you're going to give it when when this notification, like the anti-stalking notifications came yeah. up, and I contacted them, and their answer was, look, these these products are designed for you to find your devices, yeah. and and it's not meant to be. I don't think that they you know, they did see it yeah. coming because they worked yeah. with yeah. Um, networks of like domestic violence or women's yeah, networks know, and things at yeah. the time. Remember when they announced it? No, they but, said that. No, but my, my so well, if you using this solely to keep track of your items, mm. not to track people, then this little giveaway. Designed to prevent tra- yes. stalking is going to alert the thieves, and yeah. their response, as I said, was, "Well, it's meant for you to find your devices." And yeah, it's actually meant if you find stuff around the home. Not- yeah, it's not meant to be tracked across the city to find your stolen. It, it's whatever. bloody good at it, though. Yeah, of course, bloody good at it. Of course. All right, details of uh, that Google stuff is up at eftm.com, and uh, you can read more about it. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech with Trevor Long and Stephen Fennec. This is going to be a real edit today because that dropped out. Yeah, it dropped out again. <laughs> Just during the Damn track. it. <sighs> Did anyway. the battery already run out or is there something yeah, so wrong with the 91%. camera? Yeah, it's 91%. Really? So uh, the, you're a good point. It could be the camera. It could be the camera. Yeah. a 91% battery. I've got it? spares, so we'll be right. Okay. Doing very well. Yeah. I've got spares. I've got them up here. I was testing yeah, no, new so angles. What are, you, what are you doing new angles Long for? Long story, but I, was, I thought those poles... Oh, my God, there's one up there too. I thought those poles would be able to be used here on the desk. So uh-huh. that I could get rid of the tripods, just clean it up a bit. Yeah. But then it puts the cameras too close and then the wide well, shot doesn't work. Oh, bit of inside baseball here. I use those poles mm. in my where I record my videos at home so they're not connected to my desk. Yes. So I've got a little frame in front of the desk that uses the pole. So rather so I don't have a tripod sticking mm. out. So it's pretty neat behind the Did desk. Did Aaron make the frame? No, I bought it. What sort of frame? It's a metal frame. Yeah. What do you mean? It's a metal frame that's used. It's normally designed for people who want to do a top-down shot. So I just put it on the floor, raise it to its highest level, and use that pole to. Is it square edged or yeah, square edged? Yeah, I might need to get one for down there. That might work. I will show you the ones I purchased. Yeah, but what are the mate? legs on it? Big, big black legs. So yeah, it's well, a very, very. I'm st- trying to no, get no, rid of the legs. No, no, no. Um, They're flat on the floor, though. Flat on the floor. Flat on the floor. Flat right angle edge. A lot of inside baseball here this week on Two we'll Blokes Talking you Tech. This we'll sort show's going to take me five <laughs> hours to edit. We'll sort it out. For reasons that are not relevant to you, folks. Yeah. But I will put in the yards. <laughs> Damn Good right. for you, mate. Good for Hard you. yards. That's what we do here, mate. We put in the that's extra That's what effort. I do. I mean, I, you do for the movie show. I drive out here, mate. That's, oh. that's my effort. I've got to get out of here. Dry your eyes, princess. All right. See you next week. Bye-bye. Everything about tech you never wanted to know. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech.